The practice of reading and the proclamation of God's word is the ongoing conversation between the individual, the body of Christ, and the creator. In his book, Crafting a Rule of Life, Stephen Machia talks about how we have holy times of the year where we consecrate certain days for celebration, renewal, and lament. Think of Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, or Lent. We also have a holy and consecrated day of the week, the Sabbath day, which we have learned is a time to set aside for rest, delight, time to notice God and be fulfilled in him. He goes on to argue that for the Christian, even the day in itself has holy moments set aside for engaging with God through his word in prayerful devotion and through contemplation and study. Machia describes scripture reading to be a threefold discipline. First, we receive the word of God into the good soil of our souls. We also pray, having a conversation where we listen and talk back to God. And then we reflect on the pages of our journals or through other creative means or within communities of other believers. Many of our forefathers in the faith exemplified what it means to live in the way of Psalm 1. They practiced the daily office, had set times of dedicated prayer, some three times a day, others seven times a day. And they also practiced night vigils where they meditated on God's word throughout the night. This made me curious, and so I decided to set out on an experiment of my own. Hello everyone, and welcome to my worship lab where I did my first night vigil experiment for this class. And um, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about what I did, why I did this, and some of the supplies that I use what the night looked like and maybe encourage you to step out and try it as well. And so um, this is actually my mom's little library in her house. I decided to pick a setting where I wouldn't be distracted. I knew that if I was at my own house, I would be very, very distracted with things to do or chores to get done. And I knew it was going to be a, a, a time of wrestling for me. So I just completely retreated to my mom's house, um, came here, and I had a few things um, that I had with me and one of course was my Bible and then another thing that I had with me was um, Adele Calhoun's reading the spiritual disciplines handbook that we got in class and so I had those things and I'll put a picture up of the night because I didn't want to film anything so I didn't um, video any of my process because I really wanted to fully engage and engage and I didn't want to have any technology with me so I took a few pictures of my setup and here are the pictures as you can see that um, I have some candles lit I have um, so my Bible and Adele Calhoun's spiritual disciplines handbook practices that transform us that we received in the e-reserve so I set aside the time um, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. and that was going to be my five hours of focused scripture soaking. Um, I have never done anything like this before. In fact, I am very undisciplined, which is why I felt like I needed to talk about this in order to present well, <laughs> or do this in order to present well. And it ended up being an incredible experience that I would love to encourage you guys to try. It doesn't have to start with five hours, maybe one hour or two hours. Um, but I will say that it was really amazing how God moved the moment I gave him a little bit of room in my life um, just to set aside and be open to him working in my heart through his word. So um, I began the night with Psalm 139. On Psalm 139, um, David writes, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And so as I was engaging with that scripture and just wanting to soak it in, I created a list of confessions and just allowed God to unearth hidden sins within me. All the while, I have a Spotify playlist that's called T4G. Um, you can find it on Spotify. It's Sovereign Grace music and it's just hymns. And a hymn came on that I'd never heard before called His Mercy is More. And the lyrics repeat, our sins though they are many, His mercy is more. And so I'm, as I was writing out this ever-growing catalog of my sins and issues of resentment within my own heart, I was sim simultaneously being reminded of His mercies far exceeding my list. And so my heart was very comforted by God's word um, and his kindness in that moment. 
a large portion of the night was dedicated towards memorizing Psalm 19 um, and just reciting this psalm. And so it's a very special psalm to me. I'm not quite sure why, but um, probably one of the first verses I ever memorized as Christian was, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And then I really wanted to focus on the psalm because it talks about the law of the Lord being perfect and re refreshing to the soul and um, God's commands um, being light to the psalmist's eyes. And I wanted to feel that as I was engaging with God's word because Psalm 19 is a celebration of engaging with God's word. So that's why I chose that one. So I was very surprised by this, but the night went by really, really fast. And just as I was reading scripture and even reading pieces of um, the Spiritual Disciplines Handbook, which was not for a school study, but just for um, just growing closer to God and having things to pray about um, regarding like Sabbath and these other things that he has been really working on in my heart over the past six months or so, um, I had a time of just responding to God and listening to God and going to his word and weighing what I was hearing, what I felt like I was hearing from God according to his word. Um, and then I felt like um, God really led me to, to pray and study miracles in that time. And so it was just a beautiful time of communion with God. And so I want to encourage you guys um, to maybe try a time of scripture soaking of your own. And it doesn't have to look like this, obviously, but I just thought that um, I would just see how it goes for you guys and then report back and let you know how it went. And I truly felt like I had probably some of the deepest communion with God that I've had in a really long time. And so I encourage you to try it. Um, I don't think I don't think you'll regret spending five hours with God or two hours with God or even 30 minutes with God. So I just want to challenge you guys in that way. Makia then says, as we discover afresh the joy of an ever deepening devotional experience, the gift of new life is brought to our souls. Out of this sacred space, we enter into the community worship and shared witness with vitality that's contagious both to the body of Christ and the world that we've been called to serve in Jesus' name, end quote. This is where the overflow of, the, of proclamation happens. Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. We commune with God, and the inward joy of being with Him and feasting on His word naturally becomes outward proclamation through evangelism, teaching, prophetic speech, shepherding, counseling, and so forth. Eugene Peterson beautifully describes this in his chapter, Poets and Pastors, in the book, The Contemplative Pastor. He talks about the way we use our words in the discipline of proclamation of God's holy word. This is what he says. Pastors and poets do many things in common. Use words with reverence, get immersed in everyday particulars, spy out the glories of the commonplace, warn of illusions, attend the subtle interconnections between the and the meaning of the spirit. I think we ought to seek each other out as friends now. Poets are not primarily trying to tell us or trying to get us to do something. By attending to words with playful discipline or disciplined playfulness, they draw us into deeper respect for the words and the reality of these things. Pastors are also in the word business. We preach, teach, and counsel using words. People often pay particular attention. in a world where words are used carelessly by some and cunningly by others.